Can you imagine being pregnant and getting food poisoning at the same time? Welcome to the DeConta channel, where we discuss all things educational and we never duck away from difficult topics. Now, for those of us who have had food poisoning before, we know it really, really sucks. So in order to avoid food poisoning while you're pregnant and or eating some kind of food that could cause harm to your baby, it's important to be aware of a few types of foods that you should avoid during pregnancy. The foods to be concerned with are basically any foods that have a higher risk of being contaminated with a certain strain of bacteria. And the bacteria we're most worried about during pregnancy are salmonella, toxoplasma, listeria, and E. coli. You also want to avoid foods containing high levels of vitamin A and foods that are more likely to contain heavy metals, such as mercury, which can cause nervous system and brain damage to your little one. So first and foremost, the foods that can harbor salmonella and toxoplasma bacteria are cold Italian deli meats and hot dogs, raw or undercooked meat, including sushi that's raw and shellfish or your very undercooked poultry or steak, and raw or undercooked eggs, and bean sprouts. But of course you can still enjoy these food items so long as you cook them to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to kill off all of those pesky little bacteria. In order to avoid salmonella and toxoplasma poisoning, you also want to avoid any other food item that says unpasteurized on the label. Basically meaning that it wasn't heat treated to kill off all of those pesky little bacteria before it was put on the store shelf. The foods that can be contaminated with listeria bacteria are all types of pâtés, which are basically just like a spreadable form of meat, really common in Europe, not so common here in the US as I've found, but pretty common in other countries. But you don't only just want to avoid the meat kind of pâtés, you also want to avoid the vegetable forms of it as well, which I'm pretty sure are gaining increasingly more interest here in the United States. You also want to avoid any kind of soft serve ice cream, not because the ice cream itself is inherently bad, but usually the nozzle that the soft serve comes from is not cleaned properly, gross, and would be uh, contaminated with that bacteria. Shockingly, you would also want to avoid cantaloupe. And there's a list of soft cheeses that are unpasteurized that you should also avoid. These include brie, camembert, feta, blue cheese, queso blanco, and queso fresco, and panela. Remember, unpasteurized is unfriendly, while pasteurized is perfect while pregnant. This is the case for all food and drink items, but especially dairy items. Now the foods that can have E. coli bacteria in them include the freshly squeezed juices that you can find at restaurants, not because the fruit is inherently bad or that the juice is inherently bad, but because the restaurant may not have sanitized or washed those fruits and vegetables in the juice efficiently. Other foods that can contain E. coli are unwashed packaged salads and vegetables, or any kind of vegetables that you find at the farmer's market or from a garden. So the bottom line here is that if you want to avoid E. coli bacteria poisoning, wash your fruits and vegetables really well and drink fruit juices that are already pre-bottled or in a box. The next type of food you want to avoid is any kind of food that has high levels of vitamin A, which is also known as retinol. The reason for this is because at high concentrations, vitamin A can cause developmental malformations and or spontaneous abortion, especially within the first 60 days following conception. So it's really important to avoid liver, fish liver oil supplements, or any other supplement that would contain high levels of vitamin A or retinol in order to avoid these horrific side effects that could occur. The last category of food you want to avoid is anything that would contain high levels of mercury or heavy metals. And typically you find those in fish or seafood, but more likely in the bigger varieties, the older varieties of fish and seafood. So the FDA suggests that pregnant women should avoid these specific kinds of fish. Big eye tuna, king mackerel, marlin, orange ruffy, swordfish, shark, and tilefish. I also hope it goes without saying that there are a few beverages that you should avoid while pregnant as well, not because it'll give you some kind of bacterial infection or something like that, but it can cause your little one to acquire facial deformations, have a low birth weight, cause you to miscarriage, 
and or cause your little one to have a learning or behavioral problem down the road. These beverages include anything that contains alcohol, energy drinks like your standard Red Bull or Monster, and an excessive amount of coffee. So we're talking more than one or two 12 ounce cups of coffee a day here. Now I know that week nine symptoms may have you feeling like you really need a gallon of caffeine or a gallon of coffee or maybe a shot of tequila at this point, but try and resist the urge. It's really not good for your little one. Week nine for me began with my right breast hurting horribly from the inside and my left nipple hurting so badly that I found it difficult to even take a shower because the water hitting it was so excruciatingly painful I had to shower with my back turned to the water. The plight of light night sleeping continues with the waking and falling asleep and then the waking and having to go pee and then falling back asleep again after tossing and turning for 30 minutes of light sleep and never actually getting into deep sleep. It's so much fun. And you know what? The one night where I actually slept well this week, I woke up insanely tired, like the kind of tired where you could have slept for another four hours straight kind of tired. So I lost out on both ends there. Can't win either way. I also feel like my hormones just straight up escaped from a psych ward this week. One moment I felt like I was weepy and depressed, I could have started crying on a dime. The next I was agitated and short fused and angry at everything. And then the next moment I just felt like a straight up female dog. And then I would feel guilty that I was agitated and annoyed and that guilt would make me sad. And then I would repeat the cycle all over again with feeling weepy and upset. And it was just a mess. But as far as food goes, at least I'm not feeling like I need to throw up anymore. It's more or less just eating to eat to survive at this point. So there's not necessarily a ton of nausea associated with it, but there isn't any excitement with eating yet either. It's just a necessity to live. The one thing I did get excited about though was a Cinnabon. I intentionally drove to the only Cinnabon location here within a 50 mile radius of our home with my daughter Ellie so that we could split a Cinnabon together and it was delicious. Now that you know what week nine felt like, let's see what the developmental milestones looked like for week nine. At nine weeks, your baby is roughly the size of an olive or a grape, measuring in at around 0.9 inches or 2.3 centimeters long. Your little one's heart is beating at around 170 beats per minute. You might have had the wonderful fortune of going to the ultrasound already and hearing that beautiful thump thumping, but I will have to wait until week 10, next week's video, to show you guys how my ultrasound goes there and hear that beautiful thump thumping myself just one short week from now. So if you wanna see what you can expect at your first ultrasound, be sure to tune in next week to watch week 10's video. Your little one also has all of the essential body parts now, including elbows and knees that can bend. Their facial features are also quite developed with an upper lip, the beginning of a nose, and eyelids. At this point, there are even 10 little tiny tooth buds forming in the bands of their gums. They're not hard yet and they haven't connected to the jawbone, but they're forming nonetheless. There's also some great news for you this week since the placenta should be about fully developed by now and is taking on the brunt of that hormonal production so that it's not impacting your body as badly as it was before. Now that's not to say that week nine isn't still kicking your butt. It might still very well be. And if it is, I'm so sorry, I completely understand. But hang in there y'all, we got this. Only a few more weeks and we can make it to the second trimester. And you know it's just gonna get better every single week, especially if we can all learn to avoid those forbidden foods we talked about earlier. These videos take quite a bit of time to make, but it only costs you a second to like this video. To join me next week on the super simplified science of pregnancy, this 40 week series following my own pregnancy all the way till birth, all you have to do is subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you next week.